pregnancy isn't really an illness, is it? Do you think someone will come to help if you pretend to be sick like that? My husband throws heartless words at me as I suffer from morning sickness, even though he has never experienced it himself. In the midst of my struggles to be understood, divine punishment befell my husband, who had consistently neglected me. My name is Megan. I met Taylor, my husband, at work and we got married. He is an office worker who continues to work without retiring. In the third year of marriage, finally I became pregnant with our long-awaited first child. On the day I found out about the pregnancy, I promptly informed my husband. Taylor, we're going to be parents. Upon hearing this, my husband's eyes widened. W wait seriously Me? A father? I went to the hospital today, and I'm already in the eighth week of pregnancy. Wow, seriously? I'm so happy. Thank you, Megan. He hugged me tightly and promised, I'll do my best. A few days later, we also reported the news to my in-laws. My in-laws always tried not to put pressure on me, saying, children are a gift. I wanted to report to these kind people as soon as possible. Thank you, Megan. To think I'll see my grandchild's face so soon. I'm really happy. Right, wife? Yes, that's right. For Taylor to become a father, it feels like a dream. Thank you so much. Our in-laws shed tears of joy. My mother-in-law, who had given birth, was especially concerned about my body on a regular basis, asking me if my body was fine. A kind husband and wonderful in-laws. I'm sure we'll live happily ever after. That's what I thought. Two weeks after the pregnancy was confirmed, suddenly, something strange started happening to my body. Ugh, I feel nauseous. Could this be morning sickness? Whether asleep or awake, the queasy sensation persisted, and I was constantly attacked by nausea, even at work. Perhaps because of that, I couldn't eat properly and my health deteriorated rapidly. Although I had planned to work diligently until maternity leave, in this condition, it was impossible to continue. With that in mind, I decided to discuss it with my husband. Taylor, can I talk to you for a moment? What's up? Actually, due to morning sickness, my body is really struggling. I'm thinking of resigning from work before taking maternity leave. Hmm, really? If that's what you've decided, it's fine, right? Uh, yeah, thank you. Surprisingly, his quick approval left me somewhat taken aback. Perhaps he respected my feelings that much? Originally, my retirement after childbirth was already planned, so maybe he saw this as a slightly accelerated version. Since my parents' health was not good, and they lived far away, there were no plans for me to return home for childbirth. Although there were anxieties about the first childbirth, I believed that with my husband by my side, we could overcome anything. So I spent my days thinking that way. One month later, it took time for the handover, but I successfully resigned from my job. Now all that was left was to live a relaxed life until childbirth. However, my health didn't improve at all. At first, I tried to do as much housework as possible, but as my belly grew, even that became challenging. Taylor, sorry. Starting tomorrow, is it okay if we just have bread for breakfast? When I asked my husband this, he turned around with a surprised expression. Huh? Why? I give you money for living expenses, right? No, it's not about the household budget. It's just that morning sickness is really taking a toll on me. Waking up in the morning is really tough. I'll buy the bread so you can have it as you like. So you mean I have to prepare it myself? Huh? You want to take your time in the morning, so I prepare it myself eat, and go to work. Is that it? It's not like that at all. <sighs> I can't believe this. 
I'm working hard every day to provide for both of us. And now, you've become a housewife, thinking you don't have to handle the housework. Saying that, my husband left the living room. Why? Why did he speak like that? I didn't choose to be in this situation willingly. I'm enduring these difficult days to raise our baby. Suppressing emotions with nowhere to go, I cried alone. I tried to convince myself that someday things would get better, even if it felt forced. Time passed, and I finally entered the ninth month of pregnancy. In the midst of swelling emotions, I desperately continued to manage the household chores. Sorry, Taylor. Can you take out the trash today? One morning, I called out to my husband as he was leaving for work. Huh? Isn't taking out the trash something you always do yourself? Yes, but today's trash is really heavy. My stomach has been aching since the morning, and it's tough today. Can you please help just for today? At that moment, unbelievable words came out of my husband's mouth. Hey, Megan, you're a housewife, right? Who do you think you are? Huh? What do you mean, who do you think you are? What was he asking me? Without waiting for my answer, he continued. I've been thinking, you know. Pregnant women aren't really sick, right? So why are you acting like you're in such pain? Pretending to be in pain? What are you talking about? I'm really struggling. So you think by acting like you're feeling unwell, someone will come to help you, huh? Megan, I never thought you'd be that cunning. I'm a bit shocked. Wait a minute. It's really not like that. Certainly, I might not be sick, but my body is in pain. And my stomach is so heavy. Let me be clear. You're overly pampering yourself just because you're pregnant. Lately, the cooking and cleaning have been slacking off. And for a wife, you're getting pretty dangerous, aren't you? Asking your husband to take out the trash before work is outrageous. Saying that, my husband left for work. I can feel that my surprise gradually turned into anger. Who do you think you are? I'm raising our child in my stomach, you know. I'm not asking for sympathy, but couldn't there be a little consideration? With this incident, I stopped relying on my husband. Even though there was a concern about something happening to our unborn child, I thought it was better than arguing with my husband and feeling uncomfortable. Afterwards, I managed the household chores to the extent that it was reasonable, and a month later I safely gave birth to our daughter. Our newborn daughter was truly adorable, enough to make the pain of childbirth disappear. Even though my husband didn't help at all during the pregnancy, he did show affection towards our daughter. But he truly only dotes. He never changes diapers, feeds milk, or soothes her when she cries. There, there, there. Melissa is so cute. Ah, oh, she smiled. You're just like me. You've got the most adorable eyes in the world. Huh? She feels like crying for some reason. Hey, hey, Megan, let me pass her. When our daughter is in a good mood, he holds her, dotes on her. And if she starts fussing, he hands her over to me. He pays no attention, even when I'm doing housework. By having our daughter handed over to me according to my husband's convenience, the efficiency of housework is deteriorating rapidly. On top of that, due to feeding every three hours, I can hardly get a decent sleep. While awake, I'm always in a daze, using up my energy similar to when I was pregnant. One day, something happened. Even on this day, while nursing our daughter, I was about to enter the bedroom when I received a message on my smartphone saying, come here for a moment. Come here for a moment? And it's not the next room. I'm struggling with sleep deprivation and a headache diligently nursing and despite all that. Feeling frustrated in my mind, without waiting for my response, a message arrived stating, quickly. Taking advantage of the moment when our daughter fell asleep, I headed to the room next door where my husband was. 
When I opened the door, my husband was wrapped up in a blanket on the bed. As soon as he saw my face, he grimaced and said, You know, my head hurts. Bring some water. Isn't it because you were drinking late last night? I sighed in disgust, and my husband retorted in an irritated voice. Are you trying to say it's a hangover? That's not it. It's definitely some kind of illness. Hurry up and bring me water. What's with that way of speaking? Why are you always so high and mighty? Huh? What about you? How can you not bring water when your own husband is suffering? That's the worst. At that moment, my love for my husband quickly faded within me. This is ridiculous. Using me only when you're in pain. Even during my pregnancy, you were so cold. If it's come to this, I'll tell him all the resentment I've been holding back. I took out my smartphone and called my in-laws. Oh, sorry to bother you so suddenly. Is this you, Mom? Taylor is complaining about something really serious. Yes. Yes. He's making a fuss about being sick. Can you come over? My husband looked at me with a confused expression. After hanging up the phone, I said to my husband, Your parents are coming over now. Calling my parents is being so dramatic. Dramatic? You're the one who made a fuss about being sick, right? Even so, there's no need for the parents to come. I just wanted you to bring me water. If you wanted water, couldn't you have done it yourself? What's with that way of talking? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? That's my line. Suddenly raising my voice, my husband flinched. D don't shout like that. It echoes in my head, you know? So what? You never cared for me when I was in pain. Why do I have to care for you when you're in pain? Isn't that fair? Well... I won't let you forget it. During morning sickness, you ignored me, even though I asked for a little help. To make matters worse, you insulted me with, Who do you think you are, even though you're a housewife? No, that is... You're the one acting high and mighty. I've been desperately raising your child in my womb for ten months. Calm down, Megan. Pregnancy is over, right? There's no use barking back now. Smirking, my husband continued to stare at me. It's over? Who said it was over? Who said it was only during pregnancy? Huh? Even after Melissa was born, right? As usual, you don't help with housework, and you leave Melissa's care to me. You're just pampering, and in the end, you're not doing anything, right? Well, that's not true, is it? I properly take care of Melissa. Properly what? You'd like to say that you're taking care of your child, but all you're doing is giving Melissa a little attention when she's in a good mood. When she is about to cry, you push her to me, and you don't do anything with diapers or milk. Where's the childcare in that? Tell me, okay? Well, that is... As I confronted my silent husband, the doorbell rang. When I opened the door, my concerned parents-in-laws were standing there. After guiding them to the bedroom, I told them, Mom, Dad, I think it's rude to say this right after you came, but I want to divorce Taylor. Huh? All three except for me opened their mouths in unison. Megan, divorce? You're lying. Why? I explained to my husband once again, who still didn't understand his own faults at this point. Why? You still don't get it? During pregnancy after childcare started, you've never once comforted me, have you? That's not true, I just- Pregnancy is not an illness. Being pregnant doesn't mean you can be too dependent. Didn't you say those things to me? Even when I was suffering from morning sickness, you didn't help, not even with taking out the trash. And even after Melissa was born, you didn't cooperate with changing diapers or preparing milk. How can I continue our marriage with someone like that? Wait, don't say that in front of my parents. At that moment, my mother-in-law, who had been listening, forcefully intervened. Explain what just happened, Taylor. What Megan just said, is it true? Well, that is... Answer clearly. Did you really say such a horrible thing to Megan when she was pregnant, like pregnant women are being too dependent? 
No, it's not like that. Megan pretends to be sick on purpose. Pretending to be sick? There is individual variation in pregnancy symptoms, and some people suffer so much that they can't help it. Do you understand that? I, I know about morning sickness, but isn't it strange not to be able to do housework? Just as he was about to desperately argue back, my father-in-law, who had been silent until then, muttered, Disgusting. My mother-in-law started wincing and shaking, and she started cutting in on my husband, who was always making excuses. Why don't you cut it out? You are so arrogant, even though you haven't experienced it yourself. Do you even understand how childbirth is a life-threatening act? My husband, who probably didn't expect to be scolded so much by his own mother, remained frozen with his mouth open. Despite this, my mother-in-law continued without mercy. How can you behave like that toward Megan, who carried your child for almost a year? As a mother, I'm embarrassed for you. I can't believe that she gave birth to such a beautiful daughter, but you've never even fed her, let alone changed her diaper. That's a disqualification as a father. Mom, wait, 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 wait. I won't wait for you. You're the one who made Megan wait all this time, aren't you? If Megan wishes for a divorce, have the decency to listen for once, you foolish son. With the final blow from his mother, my husband finally gave in. I then went to get the divorce papers and had my husband sign them in front of my in-laws. Thus ended my married life. After the divorce was finalized, I had to return to my parents' home. When I left, my in-laws bowed to me repeatedly. Megan, my stupid son, I'm so sorry. I know an apology won't make it go away, but I'm sorry, I really am. Dad, Mom, please raise your heads. I can't thank you both enough for being so good to me, and I'm sorry I had to turn out this way. No, it's okay. I think this is better for you, Megan and Melissa. That's right. You can always come back and see us again when you feel like it. Yes, of course. Thank you for all your help. After expressing my gratitude for the last time, I parted ways with my in-laws. Even now, after some time has passed since the divorce, I am still in contact with my in-laws. It seems that my in-laws have no contact with my ex-husband either. Since my ex-husband and I got married through work, when the reason for the divorce spread within the company, he became an outcast in no time. Taylor apparently didn't help at all with childcare and his wife got fed up. Even before that, it seems he didn't do anything during pregnancy, you know. He was striking poses like, I'm a hands-on dad, though. Huh? Really? No wonder she left him. In this awkward atmosphere, my ex-husband reluctantly continues his job. Well, he probably doesn't have the option to quit his job. After all, he has to keep paying child support until our daughter reaches adulthood. Although it means taking away a father figure from our daughter, I don't regret it. I'm sure Melissa will understand when she grows up. From now on, I plan to raise our daughter well with the help of both parents.